What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here. We are officially 24 hours removed from the Jacksonville Jaguars' week number two loss against the Tennessee Titans. The Jaguars still have not won in Tennessee since 2013, but there was something about this game against the Titans, something different. You know, it it was a loss, and you know, I'm not one to claim moral victories, but this one sure kind of had that moral victory feeling. There there were some things that the Jaguars can work on and still some kinks, you know, that prevented the Jaguars from ultimately getting the victory and we're going to talk about that. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Tennessee Titans week number 2 recap, position grades and players of the week. So as always, we're going to start things off with the offense and of course, we're going to kick things off by talking about the quarterback position and talk about your Lord and Savior, my Lord and Savior, Gardner Minshew. And again, I think Gardner Minshew puts the case to rest that the Jacksonville Jaguars are not tanking for Trevor Lawrence because the Jacksonville Jaguars have a franchise quarterback in Gardner Minshew. Gardner Minshew didn't, you know, you can't expect Gardner Minshew to go 19 for 20 every single game. You can't expect him to not throw interceptions every single game. But something that you can expect for him is in crucial moments, he's going to put the team on his shoulders. The Jaguars were in a real bad situation heading into the second half. Obviously, the special teams, which is something we don't really ever talk about in the uh, Jaguars position uh, grades, but unfortunately, this was the worst special teams performance I have seen from the Jaguars in a long time. And before we really kind of dabble up and talk about Gardner Minshew, I guess it only makes sense that we talk about that special team problems and we talk about the special teams a little bit. Josh Lambeau, this is the worst game Josh Lambeau had as a Jaguar. I mean, that squib kick really was what ultimately lost the Jaguars the game. We're not going to talk about the missed extra point because, I mean, that happens sometimes. The, uh, Colts miss an extra, I mean the Colts, the Titans miss an extra point, so I mean that kind of evens itself out, but that squib kick, you know, whether you want to make the argument if that play should have even been called, I get that, but the squib kick was a big mess up that, you know, the Titans were able to connect on a pass and get a field goal before halftime, so instead of having um, a 7 point lead heading into the locker room, they had a 10 point lead, so I mean instead of a... Uh, what was the lead? It was instead of a 14... It was I think it was a 14-point lead heading into the locker room uh, that they, the Titans ended up having instead of a 13-12. Yeah, it was it was something. You know, it, <laughs> I can't totally remember. It was either like a 17-point a lead heading into the locker room. Let's see. So it was 10-24. to 24. Yeah, so it was 10-24. to 24. So it was a 14-point lead heading into the locker room uh, for the Titans. So... You know, that squib kick was, you know, costly, you know, and it was a big deal, and that mistake really kind of costed the Jaguars. But going back to what I have to say about Gardner Minshew, Gardner Minshew did not throw an incomplete pass in the second half until, I believe, midway through the fourth quarter. Gardner Minshew, you know, they made the adjustments in the locker room. Gardner Minshew balled out, and he did exactly what he needed to do to bring that team back. He threw, he went 30 for 45, 339 yards, three touchdowns, two picks. And those three touchdown passes were all beautiful. Obviously the one to Tyler Eifert was way upstairs to a point where only Tyler Eifert could catch that football. And then the one to Chris Thompson, man, whoo, that was a beauty as well. I mean, that was beautifully placed. It was right into the hands of Chris Thompson. And uh, the Keelan Cole touchdown was another um, great throw as well. So Gardner Minshew, is not a liability to the Jacksonville Jaguars. Gardner Minshew wins you games. Gardner Minshew keeps you in football games. Gardner Minshew is a franchise quarterback for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Those two interceptions, you know, I think the first one was kind of just how the play calling was in the first half. Um, Jay Gruden did a great job calling this game and making second half adjustments, something that you haven't seen the Jaguars make on the offense side of the ball in a really long time, or at least... You haven't really seen it in full effect, you know, to the point where Jay Gruden did it. I think in the first half, the offense was a little anemic, and the, you know, the game plan wasn't that great. The game plan overall wasn't that great. And, you know, they're running a lot of these 
routes where they had receivers in the same area and you know the interception Colin Johnson tipped the ball there's two receivers in the area the ball ended up getting deflected and intercepted and you know whether you want to say that's Gardner's fault or not is up to you but you know it was a ball that I don't even think was supposed to go to Colin Johnson and you know it ended up being intercepted and that last second tipped interception was a big Big deflating play. It was an excellent play on the defensive line's part, but, uh, you know, and that interception was a heads-up play as well. You know, credit to the Tennessee Titans. I mean, the Titans, you know, this is going to be a dogfight for the AFC South. You know, like I said, you know, we'll talk more about the Titans' offense and the Titans' defense, you know, as this video progresses, but I really think it's going to be a dogfight here in the AFC South, and this was an overall fun game to watch. But, you know, Gardner Minshew did the thing. Gardner Minshew, you know, didn't cost us the game. He did everything he needed to and, you know, kept us alive. And, you know, if it wasn't for that tip pass and a great athletic play by a Tennessee defensive lineman, I mean, who knows what Gardner could have done. You know, Gardner could have maybe drove us down field goal range. Lambeau could have redeemed himself. This could be an overtime game. And, you know, what, what could have happened is, you know, really anything could have happened. So Gardner Minshew you know, really had a chance to make a play. But I'm going to give Gardner Minshew overall a B plus. I mean, you know, last week getting the A in the victory. We're not going to be giving Gardner Minshew an A on this on this game, even though he threw a career high in yards and, a, you know, threw three touchdowns again. But, um, yeah, we'll, we'll hold off on getting the A rating because he didn't get, the, didn't get the victory. So a B plus for him. Now we're going to move on to the offensive line. The offensive line was below average. I mean, there were there were some plays where um, I think in the run game they did well. I think there was some alleys for uh, James Robinson to run, and again we'll talk more about that when we get into the uh, running backs. Um, but as far as pass game goes, I mean that one third down play when they didn't slide over to protect uh, Gardner Minshew and didn't slide over to block Jadavion Clowney, and Clowney had a free run at Gardner Minshew. I mean you just you can't let that happen. I know you got an improviser back there. You got, you know, a guy that's really good at evading pressure back there. But as an offensive lineman, I mean, you can't let that happen. You can't be doing that kind of stuff. You got to be able to give your quarterback some time. And, you know, it, they didn't play as well as they did last week. I still think they did an all right job. But, I mean, there were there were some glaring, you know, mistakes. And, obviously, you know, Brandon Linder got hurt as well. I thought Tyler Shatley kind of came in and, you know, played well. I thought Tyler Shatley kind of filled in for him all right and did a, did a decent job. But overall, the offensive line uh, didn't perform as well as last week. I think there's still some improvements to be made um, as far as this offensive line goes. But uh, not too bad of a game. I'm going to be giving him a B- minus on the day. I was close to giving him a C+, plus, but uh, we're going to go B- minus for the offensive line because they did a lot of good things in the run game. And uh, that's what we're going to be talking about here with the running backs. And James Robinson, bro, it's a 100-yard game for that young man, that undrafted free agent. I mean, you know, I thought when I was previewing this game, I mean, it looked like the Colts kind of, you know, got that tape and really got to figure out Robinson in the second half and, you know, were able to limit him to, uh, I think, like only five, six yards in the second half. So I thought, you know, the Titans were going to be able to, limit James Robinson they were going to be able to limit what he could do but no he ended up having a better game than last week a 6.4 yard average his burst was amazing I mean right when he got through the through the hole I mean his acceleration was there his speed was there everything was there and he was just playing tremendously and he looked great and he looked like a starting running back I mean that's that's what he looked like I mean you know you talk about all the talk that went around when the Jaguars released Leonard Fournette and you know, who this running back's going to be and, you know, how all-in are we going to be on James Robinson and, you know, this coaching staff's all-in on James Robinson. I think the fans are all-in on James Robinson as well, and I think, you know, that's uh, that's for good reason. James Robinson, 16 carries, 102. He played really well. And uh, another big piece to this uh, running game is not actually uh, another running back. It's the uh, Swiss Army knife of an offensive weapon that is LaVisca Chenault. And this is a guy that week in and week out I think is going to continue to prove to be one of, if not the biggest piece to the Jacksonville Jaguars offense. I mean, he's a great receiver, and when he runs the ball, he has vision like a running back. I mean, he doesn't just have, like, 
He's not like a receiver when he runs the ball. You know, when you see a receiver get the ball in the backfield, I mean, they still try to take it to the outside. This guy has running back vision. I mean, he takes it downhill. He reads the blocks. He goes through the hole. I mean, he is just an overall great asset to the Jacksonville Jaguars, and I couldn't be more happy to have him on this offense, and I couldn't be more happy to see how well he played. Um, He had five carries for 37 yards. Uh, running the ball for the Jacksonville Jaguars. So he was another important piece to this run game for the Jags. Chris Thompson, I mean, he didn't really contribute too much. Two carries, seven yards. But James Robinson, Visca Chenault, um, you know, improved this offense to where this rushing attack and this passing attack is something that you got a game plan for because they're both really effective. So that's why I'm going to be giving this run game an A on the day. They played really well. James Robinson... You know, I know this is only the second game of his career, but had a career day. LaVisca Chenault looked good as well. And uh, like I said, you know, you're going to have to game plan for these receivers, and you're going to have to game plan for the run game. Speaking of these wide receivers, there's just so many of them. There's just so many of them that can make plays. And you got some tight ends as well. James O'Shaughnessy, four catches for 40 yards. It was good to see him back on the field. Tyler Eifert played well. LaVisca Chenault again. I mean, DJ Chark had four catches for 84 yards, set the top off the defense, caught a 50-yard pass. I mean, Keelan Cole, too. I mean, who who would have thought Keelan Cole was going to be, you know, this big piece of the offense this year? I mean, I sure did not think, like, Keelan Cole was going to be this guy that the Jaguars were going to rely so heavy on. But, I mean, he has, and he has, he has showed up, and he has been that guy. And uh, him and Shark and, you know, Conley as well. I thought Conley was going to be kind of a, you know, more, a, you know, a bigger part of this offense. But, you know, so far through two weeks, he has been a little bit. But, you know, in this game, he got those four catches for 48 yards. But these wide receivers, man, they're going to contribute. They're just going to continue to get better. And then, you know, you add on guys like Visca, who in this game um, had three catches for 35 yards. And you also got Colin Johnson, who... You know, didn't have a catch this game, but, you know, as the season progresses, I think he's going to continue to be a uh, dynamic part of this offense. And you just got you got tons of targets running around the field, and this is a great Jacksonville Jaguar offense. And it might be, you know, the best Jaguars offense that we have seen in, like, 10 years. I mean, this is a great, great offense. Tons of targets, a great quarterback, and a good run game to go along with it. That's why we're going to get the wide receivers in A as well. They don't drop a lot of passes. I mean, everything that Gardner throws in their general vicinity, they catch it. That's another good thing. I mean, Gardner's so on target. I mean, you never really have to worry (laughs) about Gardner, you know, throwing it and them not catching it. But, you know, it was a it was a great performance from these wide receivers. So they're going to get an A on the day. Overall for this offense they balled out. They're scoring points. They're doing everything they need to do. This offense is going to get another A grade on the day. I think they're off. I think the offensive line needs to kind of, you know, shape its stuff together a little bit to continuously be really good because I think, you know, they still had a pretty solid game. But again, you know, there's some kinks to work out, and you're going to get that with every offensive line. And, you know, obviously, you know, some penalties, some injuries, and things like that, but overall this offense is like the best Jaguars offense that I have seen in a really, really long time, and it's really unfortunate because it seems like with the Jaguars, you either get one or the other. You never get both. You never get a good offense and a good defense. You know, you you, you, either, you get one or the other. You know, it's never, it's never both. So the overall grade for the offense is going to be getting an A. Now let's move over to the defensive side of the ball. Now as far as the defense goes, I really... I think a lot of it is scheme problems. Like I said in my instant reactions, I mean, you hear the announcers say it all the time. This is supposed to be like an immolation or an imitation of what the Seahawks run. And if it is, it is a very, very piss poor imitation of what Seattle runs because the Jaguars run it really bad. Like, I mean, they were just terrible on third downs. The Jaguars' offense was terrific on third downs. The Jaguars' defense could not get off the field on third down to save their life because they were always in this zone coverage, and, you know, Ryan Tannehill dialed it up. I said in my preview, Ryan Tannehill's going to have to beat us because, you know, we're going to have to shut down Derrick Henry and, you know, let Ryan Tannehill beat us, 
And what do you fucking know? <laughs> and what do you fucking know? The GOAT himself, Ryan Tannehill, he beat us. And, you know, it was right off the jump, too. Ryan Tannehill put the things together. He went 18 for 24, 239, four touchdown passes. Like, that was a great, great game for Ryan Tannehill. A career high, four touchdown passes. But one thing the Jaguars did extremely well is something that I said they needed to do in order to win, and they were oh so close to getting that victory, was stopping Derrick Henry, and they did that, and they did that really, really well. So let's talk about the defensive line first. The defensive line got a really good push against the Tennessee offensive line that I still think is really good. And this Tennessee offensive line protected Ryan Tannehill with their life. They only got one sack, which is something that I hope is not a problem all year round, because it can't be. You know, it can't be. Like, the the lack of pressure that the Jaguars' defensive line continues to get on these quarterbacks, it's going to hurt all the time. Like, this, the Jags' offense is going to have to continuously put up points if the Jags' defense can't get off the field on third down. You know, we can sit here and we can talk about the secondary like we're going to and, you know, this zone defense and how the quarterback can just pick that apart, find openings. But, you know, if... We're able to get pressure on the quarterback. We get sacks. I mean, that shouldn't matter. You know, Todd Wash, I think, needs to realize that this defensive line is pretty solid, but it's not that Saxonville 2017 defensive line. You're going to have to bring more than four people. You're going to have to throw in some blitz packages because this defensive line is just not getting to quarterbacks, and it did not get to Ryan Tannehill. Clay, Clay, Clay LeVon Chason got his first sack of his career, which was fun to watch. Josh Allen hit Ryan Tannehill, and he delivered a great ball. Like, I feel like that's just Josh Allen's, that's Josh Allen things. Like, I mean, he, he'll hit a quarterback, and they'll just deliver the best pass that I've ever seen that quarterback throw. But uh, they're going to have to get after the quarterback. But as far as, you know, going up against a run, I mean, this is a big step up for the Jaguars. I mean, this was a team, you know, for years that just could not stop the run. And, you know, right now they're doing a way better job at doing that. And they did that against a premier running back in Derrick Henry. And they stepped up and they made plays when they needed to. I mean, you had, like, Gotsis making, like, a tackle in the backfield, you know, on Derrick Henry. You had Avery Jones taking on double teams, making big tackles on Derrick Henry. I mean, this is a Jaguar defense that did spectacular against the run. But you need to get pressure on the quarterback. So with that being said, I'm going to give this defensive line a C+. You did great in stopping the run, but you have to do the next step and get pressure on the quarterback. You know, whether that's a scheme issue with Todd Wash not sending in more pressure or, you know, what have you, but they are just not getting pressure on the quarterback, and that's just the way it is. It sucks, but, again, that's just the way she goes. Now, as far as the linebackers go, Miles Jack and Joe Schober had another good game. They combined for 21 tackles, but again, I mean, just in the pass coverage, you know, I don't know, again, you know, it's like all scheme shit, but they're both just not doing really that great as far as, you know, the zone defense goes. You know, I'm really irritated with Todd Wash. I wish we just left Todd Wash in Tennessee, but, you know, as far as just the pass defense goes, I want to see it get better, but Joe Schobert, Miles Jack, again, put in a tremendous effort. Um, against Derrick Henry and in the run game. You know, Leon Jacobs, too. Leon Jacobs showed out and uh, got a good hit on Derrick Henry as well. So I'm not worried about these linebackers. You know, with Schobert, Miles Jack, I never really am, and I never have been. So, you know, two guys that just go out, do their job, and play well, and that's exactly what Miles Jack and Joe Schobert did. So I'm going to be giving these linebackers a B plus, and they were very instrumental in uh, stopping Derrick Henry as well, plugging up those holes, and uh, did a great job. Now the defensive backs, um, you know, DJ Hayden's kind of a flop this year, which was, you know, not something I expected. I thought he was a great nickel corner for a lot of years, and now he's just slowing down. I mean, that is what it is. Um, Trey Herndon, CJ Henderson, I mean, they do what they do on the outside. It's, it's scheme, man. I think it's scheme. Like, I think there's... These guys are talented, you know, when they're out there making one-on-one -on -one plays. But, uh, you know, guys like Andrew Wingard, who I think is going to hamper this, this secondary grade down quite a bit. Um, you know, he got schooled a couple times. And, 
you know, though he made a lot of tackles, he did, you know, get served on some touchdown passes. And then you got, you know, like Josh Jones, who I think is going to be a really solid part of this defense for this season. You know, to conclude the season, I think we're going to look back and say Josh Jones was, you know, a big piece of this Jaguar defense. But, um, yeah, Andrew Wingard, man, that just – you wish more for him, don't you? Yeah, I mean, you look at him and you're just like, dude, I, I wished more for you. But, you know, they're, they're going to attack you. I mean, you're just coming in there. And hopefully he continues to progress because as of right now, I mean, they're, they're just going to consistently, consistently attack him because that's just how they look at him. But the secondary, I think I'm going to give him a B. Like I said, these guys are good playmakers, like individually, but they just need to... They just need to switch the scheme up. They need to do something. They need to do something because it's just not clicking. Something's not clicking with the secondary of this past defense. It's just not. Overall, I'm going to be giving this defense a C plus on the day. I mean, there's just some, just some. I mean, that pass interference on Miles Jack was terrible, but I mean, this 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 past defense just needs to get better. I mean, C.J. Henderson obviously is a dog and he'll do good. You know when you ask him to, but the scheme needs to be better. We can't let fucking quarterbacks throw 400, 500 yards on us. And you know, though Tannehill didn't do that, but he just he just made it look easy when he needed to. Picked apart the defense, found the holes in the defense. You know, threw four touchdowns. I mean, that's that's exactly what you that's what you ask your quarterback to do. That's it. <laughs> that's just that's what you ask your quarterback to do. And he went out there and he did it. And finally, my favorite time of the week, your favorite time of the week, and your mom's favorite time of the week, Players of the Week, and for the offense, we're going to go with James Robinson. I think that's only fair. James Robinson, his first 100-yard game in the NFL. I mean, Gardner Minshew with the 300 yards, three touchdowns, is obviously impressive, but, you know, if we're going to give out Gardner Minshew Offensive MVP awards, you know, we'd have to do that every week. And he threw the two interceptions, so I'm going to give it to James Robinson. I think Robinson deserves to get this MVP award and, uh, you know, hopefully he it high because, you know, nothing nothing speaks more volumes than getting a Trebes Offensive Player of the Week. Now, as far as the Defensive Player of the Week, I'm going to give it to... I want to give it to... Uh, I think Miles Jack makes sense because he's all over the field, but uh, I want to give it to Clay Levon Chason because he got his first sack, and I think that's what I'm going to do. Because I didn't think the defense performed too well. So I'm going to give it to Caleb Von Chason. Got his first sack in a Jacksonville Jaguar uniform. So wear that honor proudly. And I hope you're just as excited as getting that reward as I am rewarding it to you. And that was my Jaguars versus Titans week number two recap, position grades, and players of the week. What would you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget you check links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Tree Talks. Follow me on Twitter. At Troop Talks or follow me on Instagram at Trey Vaughn Pixley. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new videos on this channel three days a week. Ain't nobody outworking me. Them just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.